Hey guys, we're live, so I'm gonna allow some people to pop on. Um, we're gonna check the viewers, and as they start to come on, we will get started. This link is gonna be the link for the recording, just for anybody who um, has a team that maybe couldn't pop on live. I also have a thread going in Beatnik um, where you can post any kind of questions that you have, maybe that you think of during the call, and we'll try to get those answered for you. I'm going to try to keep it to 30 minutes, so bear with us. <clears throat> 17 and clubbing. <laughs> Look, not everybody will be on live either. Read to see like their questions. So I'm going to have them do their questions over here. Mm. See some of them are tagging their coaches. Well, I get to like 40. Mm -hmm. So close below here. Thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started as everybody's hopping on because I'm going to introduce us and that's going to take a little bit of time anyway. So, hi guys. Um, thank you all for popping on the team call tonight. I'm Nikki for those of you who don't know who I am. And um, I shared this over in Team Fit, so hopefully some of you guys got to hop on the call as well. Um, I'm here with my brother in law. Sutton. Hello, everybody. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Sut's first time on a team call. He's actually not a coach, um, doing things a little bit differently, but I just thought that it would be really helpful for us to get on a call and have a fresh perspective. So we always hear from coaches. You probably get really sick of hearing from me, and so I wanted to bring a fresh face on that has some new insight with Instagram. So the topic tonight is going to be all about growing your Instagram following and basically just some top tips on that. I know that you've heard some other people talk about Instagram and how they grow and I've shared a little bit about what I do, but um, Sutton is also an entrepreneur. He started his own business, Cage Kings. What? <laughs> um, so follow him. What's your handle on Instagram? Cage.kings. There you go. So um, follow him over there and just kind of check out his page. He's getting everything started fresh from really growing mostly from social media. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see how he does things a little bit differently. Maybe it'll work for you. Um, he's also way younger than me, so he probably has some things that I don't even know about. So I'll be taking some notes as well. Um, and with that being said, Sut, if you want to like just say a little bit about yeah. kind of why you got started on Instagram and all that. So, you know, starting starting a business, I, I really wanted to have a, a big following um, just because, you know, having a big following opens up, you know, a lot of opportunity to obviously if you have a product to sell or, you know, whether you're selling Shaco or, you know, workout programs for you guys. But but so that's why I kind of, you know, started looking into how I could build my following. And, you know, I was fortunate enough playing baseball that kind of had an easy niche with, you know, young baseball players wanting to follow me and stuff. But, um with a couple of my methods that I'll get into later. Um, I was at, I think it was October, mid to late October of 2016. I was at about two, 2000 to 2,500 followers. And then in a little over five months, I got to, I'm at 10.8 right now. Um, it's catching me. So she's trying to, she's, <laughs> she's too hard to catch, but one day maybe, but, um, yeah, just something, little things to think about before I get into my methods. Um, you know, you look at good look look at uh, big accounts. You know, with with a lot of followers and all their pages are you know they have their own unique feel and and they're all you know aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing and, and visually appealing. So um, that's one thing I kind of want to get into. You know, you have to figure out what what separates your page or or your life really from from everybody else. You know, just because you know Nikki's doing you know her page looks a certain way doesn't mean that's how yours has to look. You know, so. 
you definitely want to follow, you know, core components to a page, but you want to put your own, you know, unique uh, twist and, and creativity on that. And I think when, when you, when you can uh, bring your personality out on your page and, and be creative, that's, that's what attracts people. You know, they don't want to see just another follower. They want to see someone, you know, stepping out and doing something new and different. So whether that is, you know, being creative with your pictures, um, you know, I've, I don't have any professional photography skills or anything. I kind of just, you know, come up with my head or, or rig it up so, you know, I can take selfies. And that's another thing. You got to get over it. You got to have no shame in Instagram game. You know, you're never going to please everybody. Um, you're gonna, always going to have haters. So, but if you, if people see, you know, are happy and, and enjoying what you do, you know, that's going to, that's going to attract people. So, so don't ever try to please anyone, you know, find out what makes you unique and, um, you know, try to build your page in that way. Um, you know, aesthetically pleasing when I talk about that, personally, I like to use, you know, all my pictures, I like to put the same filter. I think Caledrion, if that, I don't know how to spell that, but that's. You use perhaps, Instagram filters? Yeah, Instagram filters. I just, yeah, I don't have any apps or anything. Um, yeah, I just use Instagram filters, but I use the same one every time. So I kind of have, you know, my page has that. Yeah, so my page kind of has that, that feel to it. And I noticed, like, you know, pages that don't have a lot of followers, they kind of just look real random and, um, you know, they just don't look look clean. And I think that's important, you know, especially when you're trying to grab someone quick. You know, you have, you know, six pictures, yeah, to, to really grab somebody. So What kind of shows you? They like yeah, I like – so me, I like, I like color. I like a lot of red. Um, if you scroll down a little more, like I got into, like, a red phase, you know, kind of right here, like – so I got a lot of red and a lot of like bright blues and um, just just fine like that. But I also have seen pages, you know, bloggers um, that just have like real dull looking, but it looks really clean and classy. So there's a ton of different ways to do it. Um, but I think, you know, having a certain feel and look to your page is really important. You know, you don't want to just have a bunch of random different filters. And, you know, I've seen pages that are all black and white that, you know, are, are super popular and have a lot of followers. But, um, yeah, that goes in with uniqueness, finding your style and, and being creative. Um, you know, you can you can copy a big account's pictures, but as long as you're putting your own flavor to it, you know, I think that's going to attract people. Um, another thing, think about, like, a catchy name. Um, Sutton Whiting is kind of – I'm blessed with a good name, so, you know, <laughs> I think it just flows. So I never had to change it too much. Um, but I know Boomer, the Swaggy Dad, that, that's catchy. You know, if you're if you're following that, you know, the Swaggy Dad, who's this guy? And then you go check his page, like, wow, he's, he's kind of swaggy. I do think there is something to having, like, a unique name as well. Like, it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily need to have your name in it. A lot of people ask, like, does it need to say my name? I know when I first started, I felt like it did. Um, and I've changed it. And I've kept Nikki Whiting just because I started with Nikki Whiting. But I did change it to Nikki Whiting Fit Wife. And like he said, my husband changed his to the Swaggy Dad. And as silly as that sounds, when he, he changed it back at one point to boomer.whiting and everyone was like, bring back the swaggy dad because you remember it. So just needs to be something remember, rememberable, memorable. And he used the swaggy dad because he does fitness or fashion on his page all the time. So that's kind of where that came from. Quick out. story about that. So we, we were out in Nashville, just a boy's trip. And some random lady comes up to him and says, are you the swaggy dad? You know, didn't even know his real name. And that just shows you like. It's kind of cool, you know, he's getting out there. People are, are noticing him as, you know, different and um, seeing him as unique and creative. And I think that's important, finding, finding your own flavor and, and, and uh, running with that. Um, yeah, and you want – I'm struggling with this. I'm trying to, you know, find ways to bring my person, personality out, you know, through Instagram. You know, when I get in front of a camera sometimes, I get a little gun shy and I try to, I try to act the way people uh, – try to word this. I try to act the way, the way people would want me, to, like the way I think people would think I'm funny instead of just, you know, just if I just be myself, I'm, yeah. I think I'm pretty funny. But yeah. when I try to be funny, I'm not. So <laughs> so finding ways to bring your personality out is big, you know, whether that's, you know, your kids or, um, you, know, a, a, you know, a crazy hobby you have or, or something like that. Um, Instagram stories right now. Instagram stories are huge, yeah. Even if you're not posting daily, we'll get into that in a little bit, but um. Yeah, stories. I know. I know my girlfriend Logan. She um, hasn't been posting a lot of content, but she's getting a lot of you know clientele from her hair and stuff just from posting stories. You know, consistently every day. So stories are big. 
as I think just as important as, you know, uh, pictures themselves. So, um, should we get into the methods? Yes. The method is where everything is different than what I do. I'm going to save the big kabang later, my, my uh, method that's most profitable for me. But um, so so little thing is do like going to the discover page and and I guess the biggest thing is finding your niche. Obviously, you know yours your guys is going to be you know fitness, um, healthy lifestyle, just a anything you know in in that sense. So going like to your discover page and literally just going on liking sprees, liking as many random pictures as you can. You know whether they have a lot of followers or not. So just on your explore page? Um, yeah, just on your explore page, just trying to, like, I'll, I'll go there and just, you know, I won't even, just no look, just start moving my, you know, thumb just to get my name, you know, in front of more eyes. So, um, and also, like, if uh, going on people's pages, if you if you like a bunch of pictures in a row, that's going to catch their eyes, so they'll go to your page. Or if you, j just any random account, doesn't have to be a big account or anything, or go deep in the archive and like a picture, you know, I know if someone goes deep in my archive and likes a picture, I'm like, well, they're, they're creeping a little bit. So I go, yeah. I go check them out. Um, so I, I like to do that too now. So, and it's been working. I, I, every time I do it, I get them to follow me back. So, um, and commenting, you know, just, just being active in general. I think, like I said, just getting your, getting your uh, username or your whatever in front of as many ads as possible is, is important. Um, hashtags and and tagging um that goes along with a niche so there's been a couple i've heard from you know boomer like you know you want to hashtag something that's super popular but then i've also heard you know you want to hashtag something that's not so popular you know so i don't know yeah the the problem with hashtagging something that's super super popular is that if you were to go to that hashtag and you click on it and you refresh the feed there's if there's millions of people using that hashtag as soon as you refresh the feed your picture is already underneath and nobody sees it anymore because you're probably just looking at that top feed as you keep refreshing so your picture just keeps going further and further down so what we were talking about at one point was just how I use things that are between like 15,000 and a hundred thousand even <coughs> as far as um, people that are using the tag and when you hit hashtag and you start to type it in, it tells you how many people are mm -hmm. using that tag. And that way your picture doesn't get lost as much. Yeah. Yeah. So I play around with that. Sometimes I use, you know, sometimes I make my own hashtags, but when you do that, you're not really getting it in front of a lot of eyes. But um, yeah, I kind of, you know, I'll, I'll hashtag some big ones and hashtag some small ones. So I think just, you know, just again, having your own style, you know, way of doing things, you know, the trial and error method. But um. And tagging, I like to tag, uh, you know, within your niche, of course, that you know, so mine is baseball. So I like to tag, you know, big baseball accounts. Not not overdo it, but if I have, for example, I, I had posted a Wilson baseball glove. It's a big, you know, glove company. I had a ton of their gloves. So I, you know, got Nikki's Diva Light and took kind of some creative pictures of all my gloves and, and tagged them. And then ended up getting featured on their page because it was a good, you know, creative picture. Did you really? Yeah, and I, I got I ended up getting like, uh, you know, couple hundred followers from that you know in 10 minutes and that was a nice little boost for yeah for the street cred but um but um also some other tip like posting at good hours i'm sure you know nikki's talked about that um for me you know sundays are big pretty much any time to you know any any time through the day sunday i get a lot of love on my pictures um early mornings you know when right when people wake up they check their phone and vice versa right before bed like i 10 30 11 you know everyone's laying in their bed kind of winding down um you know 90 percent of america is going to be on their phone you know checking it or setting an alarm or something so i think you know it, it stinks when you have a good picture and you want to post it right away but you don't think strategically and it ends up not getting love I'm like what the heck what i do so i think you know being yeah being strategic with that and um you know dropping it on a on a good time but also bad times for me, you know, Friday night, right when people are going out, you know, no one's really, you know, using We're IG that much. Yeah, exactly. Nobody's looking yep. at everyone else's. Yeah, so th those aren't good times. Um, 
And an, another thing I've been doing kind of recently, because I, I don't really have as much content as, you know, as maybe as Nikki has. But um, so I actually like recycle pictures. If I got a picture that had a lot of love on it, um, I'll go, you know, I'll let it get pretty deep in, our, in my feed. And then I'll del screenshot it, delete it, and then wait for a little bit and, and post it again. And I'm sure That's some people, smart. I'm sure some people catch it, but um, you know, it still gets it still gets a lot of love. And then if I get have a bad picture that um, doesn't get a lot of love, I'll, I'll wait till that goes down and then delete that. And I feel like you know, deleting some of your pictures kind of makes it seem like you haven't been on Instagram that long, so it gives you a little more street cred. You know, if you see someone with you know seven thousand pictures, um, you know, you're like, man. It's, it's, girl or, or guy's been at it for a while so i think that kind of keeps you young and fresh in the in the ig eyes i think but. it's i like the recycling thing too and i think what is helpful for us and we talked a little bit about it with coaching is the time hop or the memories on facebook so it i mean there's plenty of ones that pop up and i'm like wow that was, hor that was a horrible post but there are some that i'm like that's a really good post and i'll screenshot it and then repost it there was something from today that i reposted that I liked from two years ago. So yeah, don't work harder, work smarter. Yeah. I had, I had like one time with this um, girl, we did like a little, little shoot and they were like only professional pictures I really had taken. So I've recycled the heck out of those. I'm sure I got, I got, I got called out a couple of times on, that's okay. Just like, you know, you're not going to please everybody. Yeah. You're going to have the haters that'll call you out, but then you have the, the true fans like me will like you. And I'm sorry if I've ever. Oh, I'll get to that later. But we'll get into that. Oh, what else we got here? Um, yeah, and if I if I have a picture and it's a good picture, but kind of throws off the aesthetics of my page, you know, I'll, I'll probably delete that. You know, I I like I like having a clean look. Like right now, I I don't have a clean look. I gotta let me show you what I'm talking about. A little example. So, um, can you see it? There you go. So I got these like two, you know, almost identical things back and forth. If this one would have been in the middle, then that looks clean. It's but, bothering him. Yeah, it's me messing with me. But I feel like that's important, you know, those little details. Um, as silly as that sound, you should treat your Instagram as your business like that. Little mm -hmm. details do matter. Because it's just the way our society is going today, you know, social media is so big and, and Instagram is, you know, growing by the day and I think you know if it's free advertising why aren't you gonna take advantage of it and, and try to build a following if you don't care it's you know then I guess that's just an excuse but but if you're not trying to sell anything I guess it's not a not a big deal but well here we are yeah. growing businesses that's right beat Nick but um so should I get into the yeah I think the, uh, the big we need to talk about that. all right and this is my most it's confidential information, but this is literally the method that's gotten him from like two thousand yeah. to ten thousand in no time, and we're like, what? And they're they're loyal followers, loyal likers, <laughs> loyal. Yep, I call it the follow and murder method. So write that down, write it down, tattoo it, whatever you want. <laughs> but um, so it sounds a little aggressive, but it is. But. So the following murder methods is literally just what it sounds. Following people and then unfollowing them. But um, so get into a little more in depth. You know, you got to find a niche. You got to find a, for you guys, you know, for me it's baseball. For you guys it's fitness, wellness, um, coaching, anything like that. You want to find a big account with, you know, 100K to, to 200K or even or even more and, and turn their post notifications on. You can, I don't really know the button, right, but it's at the top right. So every time that account posts, it'll notify you. And um, as soon as that happens, I go in and big accounts, you know, they're going to get first 10 minutes, they're going to get, you know, thousands of likes. So I just go in and follow everybody. Under that one picture. Under that one picture, follow everybody. You don't want to, if you wait, you know, past 15, 20 minutes, then you're not getting active followers. You know, you have to do it. As they're on as soon, Yeah, as soon as possible. So they, you know, they just like the picture and they say, oh, who's this? Just follow me. Then they go to your page and probably follow you back. And <clears throat> so you do that, follow as many as you can. Be careful though, because if you go too hard with it, then you know uh, Instagram will suspend you for a little bit just just from following people. You know, won't you'll still be able to post and comment. Just and like, like Facebook, they yeah. want to make sure you're not like a robot. So I mean, it shouldn't be 
He probably does a little more than I, you would I push do. it to the limits for sure, but like how many do you how many would you say is safe and like still effective? I would say safe safe a hundred. hundred people a day. And that's plenty. Yeah, and you'll you know, you'll when you when you you wanna wait like a half hour or an hour or even the next day and then you know, kinda of clean house. If they're good pays and you keep them, but you know, I get sometimes I get, you know, just random hoopla on my page that I just gotta get rid of. So um so I follow them and, and really if you think about it, it's it's not it's not ruthless, but you're just really just saying, Hey, look at my page, you can follow me. You, you can you know, something personal. Yeah. It's literally just building your business. And yeah. Sometimes you, keep. sometimes you gotta leave the emotions out, you know, just you know for whatever reason, but what was I lost lost it? Sorry. No, it's all good, it was my bad. Was on here? Sorry. Well, while you're waiting, I was going to give an example, you think of that, um, of like what he means by the big account. So like I follow some big bloggers. I love fashion. So outside of just fitness, I'm also following people that are into fashion and like kind of what I would see some who I would want to follow or clothing I would want to wear or, you know, a blogger whose family I think is like a cute little family I love to follow. And that's the type of person that I would look at or someone who's into like um, the BBG or the tone it up girls, maybe on Instagram, not their accounts necessarily, but like a big account where, you know, someone is, is posting about that. Anyway. Or like a big account that you think, you know, the, the people who are liking that will, you know, kind of connect with you on your page, you know, it doesn't have to be fitness and, 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 and such, but you know, kind of if you're, if you're trying to coach, then that's, I guess you have to do that. But, but for do, me, I would do whatever your niche is. So not exactly, necessarily yeah. fitness. It could be fit. Like for me, it's fitness, family, fashion. Like that's kind of my three go-tos. But other people, it's like fur moms, like mm -hmm. dog moms. And yeah, there's, there's just a, there's a ton of options, but the big thing is you want, you want to have a big account that, you know, it's, 50, even 50k is fine, but just uh, it's got to be above a 50, I think, just because you know you want that instant, you know, thousands of likes, you know, in the first 10 minutes of whatever they post. Um, so yeah, so after you after you do all after you follow them and and also the people who comment on, it, I always try to you know like their comments or or something like that, just so I'm getting in front of again, getting in front of more eyes and and you know getting getting my name and username out there. Um, but wait for about, you know, an hour, a day, or, or whatever you want, and then kind of clean house. And I like to clean house because you, when you have a good – you want to have a decent ratio on Instagram because it kind of gives you street cred. You know, if, if you have – if I had 10,000 followers and I'm following 11,000, then it's just like, okay, well, you know, it's basically zero. But yeah. You want you want to have that street cred so people feel you know special when you follow them. You know they don't you want to have more way more followers than you have people that you're following. Yeah, that's what that's what you know draws people in and say like, oh, who's this? He's, he must be doing something, you know, or yeah, or, yeah. And then they and that you know it makes people feel like you uh, it makes them feel special, you know, if you if you follow them and then. But uh, sorry, if they get murdered, you know, sometimes you get, <laughs> it happens. But here's the thing, and you have to realize, a lot of people don't know when people are unfollowing them or following, mm -hmm. like, you know, you see when someone follows you, but unless you have an app that tells you when someone unfollows you, you would never know. I don't have an app, so I have no idea when someone unfollows me. I don't want it because I don't want to put emotions into mm -hmm. what I'm doing, which is completely just growing a social media. Like, why would I ever have my feelings connected to that? So... That's a good point because I my brothers tried to get me on uh, that Insta Report app and same thing. Like I was, I was just like, "Oh man, why, why are they You'll unfollowing? See, They're not following me heck with them." You, yeah. yeah. So I, yeah, I didn't want to deal with that. So, but but some people like it. Some people like the app and it's it's good it for works. certain things. Yeah. yeah. But um, personally for me, I just never really you know I never saw growth from it. Um, and I, I would get you know defensive when I, when I shouldn't have. But but yeah, a lot of people think the follow and murder method is you know cold blooded. But you're just you're just advertising. You're just pushing your page. They can they can take it or they can leave it. So um, you know no no offense to anybody that you know gets murdered. <laughs> but but um yeah the ratio. What else we got here? Oh and just yeah it's just a numbers game. You know the more the more people you the more people you follow and unfollow you may get. 10 to stick, you may get zero to stick, but you know, you're still growing and you know, just it's a numbers game. So the more people, more followers you get, 
it's just a domino effect and snowball effect and people, you know, they see you start growing and then it just, it, the more followers you have, the easier it is to get more followers. You know, Nikki was at like 15 and then a week later you're at like 20. So Yeah, it happens more. And that, that's where the struggle comes is people see a coach who's been playing their Instagram for years and you think, oh, well, she already has a following. Like that's everyone's excuse is she already has a following. That's why she's successful, but I don't have one, so I won't be successful. Well, I didn't have Instagram when – I started coaching. This was all new. So I had to grow like everyone else did who started. I was, way, I was way ahead of you. Yeah, way ahead of me. I, was, you had yeah, and I, thought, I, had, I thought, you know, I had 2,000. I thought, you know, I was a big following. Yeah, killing it. And mm -hmm. I just stayed consistent, you know, and just was very consistent. And you have to realize, too, that a big coach a lot of times has – other coaches following them someone that's been coaching for a while and has an established team a lot of times also has a lot of coaches following them so it's not necessarily that it's like customers that they have following them a lot of the numbers is just looks good you know yeah. but there's actually a lot of it that isn't going to be useful for your business so um like he said once you get to a certain number you feel like you grind for a really long time and then once you get to a certain number it does feel like it starts to flow and pick up mm -hmm. and like all that hard work was worth it yeah, like now, I'm, you know, now I get, without even doing anything, I get, you know, five to ten new followers a day, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it adds up. You yeah. know, day to day, it adds up, and then, you know, I'm sure you get more than that a day, but, you know, just the more you get, the more, the easier it is to get more, so. Yeah. But, like, if you're if you're at a hump, if you're at, like, you know, 4K and want to get to 5K, follow and murder to 5K, you know, if you, like, I, I'm. Try the method. That's the thing, too, is. I I realize that this is a little this method is a little bit time consuming. So you have to know going in that you know if you have a power hour that you do, maybe you sit down and you focus on your business for two hours a day, and Instagram is a main goal of yours to grow that this year. Maybe that's one of your goals that you have. Then I would spend a good chunk of it trying to figure out how to grow your Instagram, and it would be worth it to try a method that you've not tried just to see if it works. If it doesn't work, then you move on to something else, but it's worth it to try. I see a question right here that I go through every time. Yeah, go ahead. Do you know the answer? Yes. Okay, so Mandy said... Oh, well, I don't know the answer, but I know. Yeah, he said, is there a way to see if the person already follows you? I've had the problem where I follow or unfollow, and then down the road I refollow them. Awkward. <laughs> yeah, I've done, I've, I've done this many, 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 many times. I've had people, you know, call me out about, it. hey, why do you you've unfollowed me and follow me probably like ten times? I say, oh, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't really get into it too much, but um. I don't think that that's really gonna matter. Yeah, I don't think time. I don't think there's a way. Maybe there is. I'm I sure. think the only way you would know is if you had maybe the app, like one of the apps. I don't know if you have that, Mandy, or not. Um, someone else said, do you recommend Instagram over Facebook? I do, but I do think that, you know, Facebook for older people is, you know, for, what would you say, the age? For, Watch what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, but just for, you know. No, we're Instagram 10 years a, apart. So, it, yeah, Instagram's yeah. a younger, hipper Facebook, you yeah. know, so. One of the older coaches said that her kids, her teenager, said only old people are on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if I offended anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I just see the trend being. You know, you can see Facebook trying to keep up now with, like, the stories and, like, trying to change things around. They also own Instagram now, so it's going to be very similar mm -hmm. back and forth. I think with our society wanting everything right now, Instagram is easy because it's simple. It's very just the, the simple feed. It's gotten a little more complicated with direct message and all that, but it's more more simple. Yes, Jackie. Okay, I, 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 hold on. Oh, sorry. Miss Jackie. Do you follow public and private at the same time? And do you screen the people before following to see if they're doing another MLM or something? Uh, no, it doesn't, you, it doesn't matter for me. Yeah, I don't know, you know, Nikki might have something to say on that, but you know, just like the time consuming, I almost don't even look. I just boom, 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 boom. The no look pass, just, and that's it. But um, yeah, public, you know, if, if they're private, It'll say requested, and then you know it'll start trickling in when they accepted you. But no, I just keep I just treat them the same way. But my thought too, I know a lot of people don't work with the they don't like to click on the private and request the person. But in my opinion, like I was a private Instagram account, and I feel like a lot of people who 
you know, have a certain niche, maybe their family or like that, you know, there's a reason they're protecting it and keeping it private. Um, that's my niche or like moms. So a lot of them that are private would be my niche. So yes, I still do public and private the same. Um, I don't follow and murder to the extent he does, but if I am going through and I'm following a lot of people, I do try to click on their pictures and see quickly, um, if I feel like they're in an MLM or not. I don't necessarily care if they are, if it's outside of our competitors. Um, but I know what you mean. Jackie's talking about, I think she's talking about it works people, like all the raps people. Well, I know my method. I try to poach. <laughs> I try to, <laughs> I try to, I try to steal like uh, another baseball clothing company. I try to steal their flowers. That's me though. I'm not saying that's what you guys do for it works, but or, for, you know, for our competitors. I yeah. think, I think the thing with that is as far as Facebook, ads go any professional that does Facebook ads will tell you that you want to be setting your ads to basically mimic who your competitors would be because the people who are following accounts like mine are the people who enjoy tone it up girls BBG girls like not necessarily it works because that's not my thing but like something with fitness um, so when I'm going in and targeting people on Facebook ads, I go in and I, I use those interests. So why wouldn't I do it with Instagram? I mean, it makes sense. So, yeah. Another quick thing I didn't cover, having a, your icon picture, that's that's big. You know, but I think because that's, you know, that's the first thing people see. You want something that's catchy. You don't want just, even if it's a good family photo, you got to make sure, you know, everyone's heads are close together and it's a good picture. I mean, I know a lot of people, it's hard to see. yeah, they put, you know, they'll put a family photo, but then you end up seeing just the guy's flannel or I think know, on Instagram it needs to be you like if I'm being honest I because that. that's such a small space and you can't zoom in like to that little top left circle so in my opinion that needs to be now if it's Facebook it's like everyone, I'll do yeah. my family sometimes but I'm always in it and you can click on that and enlarge it it's different than Instagram but but that's big take pride in that because that's you know that's what people you know just that alone could catch someone and say oh that's kind of what is that what's going on there you know, so yeah. There's a lot of swag on this call, everyone said. <laughs> <laughs> That's because he's got cool gear. <laughs> yeah, check it. <laughs> um, okay, so any other do you have anything else or can I ask you a couple of questions? I'm, you might have answered them all. About it. I think you might have. Do you have a do you don't have a business profile? Do you have a business profile? I do for casings, but I'm thinking about changing um I just don't really know too much how to I'm a rookie with that still. See, I track stats, so that's why I like it. I like having the business profile, but you would have to have a business pro likes page over on Facebook yeah. in order to connect. But I, two. yeah, but I did it with Cage King, so I want to kind of get it to. You want to do but, it with yours? Yeah, but I don't know if you can do that too. I think you could. I think you'd have to disconnect Cage King yeah. and connect yours. Mike. I don't know. There's so many ways to grow, but I felt like it would be it was important to have him on and talk. Do you do a lot of hashtags? I do. I do. I don't like to hashtag it to death. I like to go like you know a solid four or five per picture. That's how I am. You know, I feel like if you overdo it, that's a big turnoff for some people. On you know, the picture or below the picture? I do it. Um, you mean what do you mean? Like in your same post in the or same do you post. Go and, okay. Yeah, I do it in the same post. Yeah, okay. I've seen the one where you're talking about with the dots. And, yeah. Yeah, I, I do it in the same post. That. Yeah, me either. But I just think if you put if you overdo it, it just looks a little desperate. Yeah. Even though the fallen murder may be desperate to some. <laughs> <laughs> it's all but, desperate. Yeah. But yeah, it's you're doing your business. So well, um, and the other thing, if you do like to just if it's someone that you just prefer to have a lot of hashtags, one of the tips that I always hear and I think it's a great idea is to have like, you know, if you have some that are fitness or some that are fashion, for example, if I'm doing a fashion post of like my outfit and I'm tagging all the brands and stuff, you can in your notes in your phone have like different paragraphs with hashtags. So like I could do a note that's like my that's fashion, ha fashion hashtags and I can do one that's fitness hashtags. So when I'm ready to go and do that, I'm not like hashtag and entering hashtag yeah. enter hashtag. Instead, you're just copy and pasting all of it in one short lump sum. See, old people have things to nope. offer too. <laughs> And being creative with you, you know, if, you know, let your humor come out or let your whatever sarcasm come out, just, 
that's again going yeah. with creativity. Just you know, be creative with your um, with your captions. You know, I know it's hard. That's I'll th- I'll sit there and I think my brother's the worst. He'll sit there and <laughs> yeah, sit there for hours trying to figure it out. But uh, I'm kind of just as bad. But yeah, just you know, being authentic I think is is big and not trying to mimic what everyone else does. You know, finding your own style and flavor to your page. Live video right now is big, so I think that that's something that I'm trying to get the hang of. I'm, I have yet to go live. See, but you were awkward at first. You said with your story, mm-hmm. so you're trying to get I'm used getting, to yeah. that right now. Baby steps. Yeah. Growth. But I think and I think it's important. Like if you have a good personality, you should just be sharing that openly. And I think the only way to get over talking and being fearful yeah. in front of the camera is just to do it over and over again. Like, I mean, I was awkward when I first got on and did any kind of live whatever but now I'm just you just talk as though you're talking to your friends like I always tell people if you're nervous about going live with your team or on a call like this or on Facebook live or any of this these options that we have is to literally sit and think as though the top five people that love you no matter what and support you and are always going to be your number one fan those are the people that you talk to you don't think about like what so-and-so who hates mm-hmm. life is going to say because they're watching it and literally like hate, hate the world. Like they're not happy with anything in their life. Why are they going to be happy with you going live and sharing whatever you want to share? So don't worry about them and worry about the ones that are going to love you and support you because that's how your followers feel. They're following you because, you know, they feel like you bring value to their life. So and that comes back to no shame. You can't have any shame. I've, I've, I've sat in my car before and just no camera on just, talk to it act like it was on just so i get comfortable like come on right, you got this just do yeah. it yeah you know because i feel like if i just talk normal then you know i can be be a funny guy but if i try to force it you know yeah. then then i sound dumb agreed all right any other questions i don't want to keep you guys like forever but i don't know if this is even the right for it at this point i haven't looked at all the other notifications um Obviously, if you guys have questions and we hop off of here, then I can ask him and get back to all of you. But um, hopefully some of you were able to take some notes on the follow and murder and um, just test it out. See if it works. I mean, I'm always up for learning new ways that things work. Instagram, along with every other social media platform, is constantly changing. So. That's about it. I don't know Appreciate you, you guys yeah. letting me let me stop by. Yeah. Sorry if I've ever murdered you. <laughs> Nothing personal. <laughs> Nothing personal. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for hopping on. Thanks uh, for getting on with us. And um, this link, again, will be the same link for your recording so that you can hand it out to your teams. Thank you guys for popping on. Have a good night. Bye.